Today, guys, I want to talk to you about running slow. Now, I know most of the videos out here on YouTube, they're about running fast, but listen, there's a lot to be said for running slow. And that is what we are going to talk about today. And um, let me just start by saying that it's going to make your runs a hundred times more enjoyable. Maybe, maybe more than that. Now I know a lot of you are rolling your eyes saying, man, 100 times more enjoyable by running slow. That's probably a bit of an exaggeration. No, it's not. And of course, this is the weekly running and training vlog where I want you to tell me about your week of running. I want to know about your successes and I definitely want to know about your setbacks. So go ahead and write in the comments. Let me know how your week went. Could be anything. Could be a specific run that you did that you're particularly proud of. Could be weekly mileage. Could be other activities that you did that support your running. But first, running slow. And the idea for this video came from me from an article I found in Trail Runner magazine. It is titled The Importance of Running Slow, which, if you've been paying attention since the beginning, is exactly the setup that I gave you. Running slow is indeed important and I'm gonna tell you why. Now the article starts off by saying that if the author David Roche could only give one piece of advice to a runner to make it more enjoyable and even to make it more productive, it would be to slow down. And I think that is, that's pretty epic advice, especially for new runners. For new runners that perhaps haven't run in any kind of structured way before, they remember running as a child and how every run has to be as fast as you can go. When in reality, as adults, as runners, as athletes who run as their primary sport, running as fast as we can go is very, rarely the goal. Of course, when we're racing, we do want to go as fast as we can go over a set distance, but we're not talking about that measured speed, right? We're talking about running slow. So the author points out that he was at the Boulder Boulder 10K, and while he was there, he saw Gitani Tamir of Ethiopia, who would actually go on to win the Boulder Boulder 10K in 2818. And if you've got no idea about times and distances, 2818 for a 10K pretty quick. But the point he's making by pointing out that he saw him was that he saw him during the warm-up and how when Tamir started his warm-up, he was running about a nine minute per mile pace, perhaps even a bit slower. Now, for those of you counting on your fingers, trying to figure out what kind of pace is that relative to his race pace, that's about double his race pace. And all that to say this, even the pros run slow. Even the pros warm up very slowly in relation to what they can do at full speed. So if it's good enough for the pros, it's good enough for you and me. Okay, but just because the pros do it doesn't mean that that's the only reason that you should be starting slow. You should be running a lot slower. But it goes back a long way. You've heard a lot of sayings, adages, proverbs, something like the longest journey starts with a single step. How do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. And the point of these sayings is that it breaks it down into smaller units of measurement. Now, if we look at our whole run as a whole, sometimes it can be quite overwhelming, especially if we're running first thing in the morning and our bodies aren't warmed up yet. It takes a lot of mental willpower and physical willpower to overcome that discomfort. And that discomfort is only accentuated when we run too fast. So by running slow, by running super slow, in the beginning of our runs, we are going to be giving our bodies time to warm up. We're going to be giving our bodies time to get into the rhythm of running and that will make the rest of our run feel a hundred times better. Now guys, I know a lot of you are thinking, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin my average pace on my watch. And I totally get that. I, I totally get that. But you have to let that go. The warm-up is separate from the actual run. Perhaps you could start your watch and then stop it if you were really bothered about having an average pace that was in a certain range. But if you really are bothered about that, you might want to take a look inside. Because honestly, guys, it really doesn't matter. Running slow in the beginning will make you a better runner, and it's going to make you enjoy your entire run. It's totally worth it. Okay, let's step away from running for a second, because there was a 2014 article in Psychology Today that actually recommends taking time before starting all big initiatives. And we can look at our daily runs as a big initiative. If your body's cold and you're starting from scratch and perhaps you don't feel like going out running or your body is just, your body's just not ready. Your body is not ready to run at all hours of the day. Taking time before starting an initiative will make that initiative better. And get this, it is a bedrock principle of performance psychology. And it's important when we're moving forward with our running to not forget about the basics. And there is nothing more basic than warming up before you actually get into your run. And by warming up, I mean starting off very slow. Now you might still be saying, but Matt, I just, I just want to go out. I just want to go out and hammer my run. Well, get this. There was a 2007 article in the journal Sports Medicine that found that warm-up strategies that include a slow start actually deter injuries. And we can back up this science with countless anecdotal examples that we've all heard. You know, athletes that start off too fast, they end up injured or they end up burnt out. This is especially true as we get older. Now you may have heard the adage, especially I've said it a hundred times on this channel, but you never make any decisions in the first mile of a run. So if you are starting your run, 
nice and slow in the beginning, you're giving yourself a chance to evaluate your body, to see how everything's feeling. Kind of like a systems check. Hey, is everything working all right? Yes, okay, now it's time to pick up the pace. I can get into the workout that I want. Think of your daily training runs like a step down race. And you would never go out and just blast a 5K without doing some kind of warm up, right? We can agree that that's just, that's just crazy. You, you are really gonna hurt yourself. Now obviously a running, now obviously running at a 5K pace is not the same as going out for an easy run in the morning. But the result is still the same. You can still hurt yourself without an adequate warm up, without starting slowly, giving your body a chance to, to just get into the groove. Now running slow in the beginning isn't just so you can run fast later in your run. There are benefits to running slow just by itself. When you run easy, it increases the capillaries surrounding those muscle fibers in a process called angiogenesis. Let's make angiogenesis the word of the day and see if you can squeeze it into a conversation somewhere. And this angiogenesis is caused by stimulating a process called vascular endothelial growth factor. And what this really boils down to is that when your body has more capillaries, it means more fuel and more oxygen for the muscles that are working. And ultimately that means a better running economy and the ability to run faster when it counts. Finally, the article wraps up with a pretty funny saying, I think, and it says, you can't make your run in the first mile, but you can break it. And we've all heard this kind of thing, you know, in, in all our sports. I remember in triathlon, it was, you can't win your race in the swim, but you can lose it. But anyway, the point is, is that when we start out slow, we have better performance later on. And that's been shown with all the world records from the 800 meter distance and up. The best way to run a world record breaking performance is by running a negative split, which if you hadn't guessed, means that you are running slower in the beginning and you speed up as the race goes on. You are just taking this and you are tweaking it for your training run. Guys, I'm telling you, I'll say it again. This is the third time. It's gonna make your runs a hundred times better. Start slow. I, I had a pretty great week, in fact, now that I just said I had a great week, I realized it wasn't a great week. At least it didn't start off as a great week. So on Monday, I went out and I ran 11 miles. And that run started out beautifully. It was nice and easy. I had no plans for this run. I just wanted to go out and enjoy my run, get my legs turning over. But about halfway through, I had some pain in my right hamstring and it struck me, it was pretty acute. It was like a pinpoint piece of pain on my hamstring. And it was so bad that I actually had to stop running for a few minutes and I was kind of self-massaging, reaching down. Now when I did reach down and put pressure on it, the pain kind of went away. But then when I tried to start running again, the pain would kick back up. Uh, you know what I'm saying. Now after a few minutes, I was able to run home without too much pain, but I was still feeling it. So I decided to take Tuesday off. Now already this week I had planned to take Wednesday off, but I was like, oh, let me move that day off from Wednesday to Tuesday. And I, and I had a great day off. Even when I woke up on Tuesday morning, I could still feel my hamstring, but it was, it was definitely better. It wasn't getting worse. And then, guys, get this, get this. I gave myself an extra day off just to see how this hamstring was feeling. Thought to myself, an extra day off isn't going to kill you. And you know what? It, it's the right thing to do. It is what I would tell anyone asking me, man, I had a feeling in my hamstring. What should I do? That is exactly what I would tell you to do. Take a couple days off and reevaluate. So on Thursday, after taking two days off because of that hamstring, I went out and I ran 7.47 miles very easy. Now, I got to tell you, the hamstring pain wasn't gone. Well, the pain was gone, but there was still a little residual discomfort. It just felt like my hamstring was a little tighter than normal, but I still went out, wanted to test it. Everything turned out pretty good. Even when I came back, my hamstring still felt a little tight, but I would never have called that an injury had I not just had two days off for some really sharp pain. So we're heading in the right direction. And with that in mind, on Friday, I went out and I ran 11 miles. Again, I kept it very easy. And on Friday, that hamstring pain was totally gone. It didn't even feel tight anymore. It was pretty good. I was pretty happy about that. So Saturday, Saturday was Christmas, knocked out 13.33 miles. And I had a good time on this front. I went out, I ran on some trails and went on my way home. I was on the road on the way home. I decided to, to kick it up a bit, just to test that hamstring just a little more. I knocked out six two minute intervals with one minute recovery in between, just to get my legs turned over a bit quicker. And obviously when you pick up the pace, it tests those muscles. So I wanted to see how the hamstring felt at speed. My friends, it felt pretty good. No problems with the hamstring. Are you surprised? I was surprised. But those two minute pickups, so just 12 minutes total of running, they left me pretty tired. I was more fatigued than I felt 
in a pretty long time. My legs were sore. And when I woke up on Sunday morning, my legs were still pretty sore, but I decided to, you know, push through that soreness, just take it out for a recovery run. And again, I knocked out 11 miles and I felt pretty good as soon as I got home. I was pretty tired, but you know, being tired from running, that's a good thing. So all in all, pretty good week, 53.9 miles total, which is about 86.7 kilometers. Did spend some time on the Peloton, managed to knock out 129 miles this week, which is approximately 207 kilometers. Don't forget, I want to hear about your week of running. I want to hear about your successes, and I definitely want to hear about your setbacks. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.